So we have our panel. Welcome, all of you. I'm sure in a second, Nick, you'll grab another microphone and hand it over, will you? Um, closest to me, we have Costas. Now, I'm delighted to see you, Costas. I didn't know you were here because I haven't seen you, and then you started tweeting. It's always a good sign. So, um, no, better late than never. So, um, Costas completed his education at the University of Hull, went straight into development on VR. Now, that might not be all that amazing, but that's, that's 2003. That's a, that's a long time ago, so you're well ahead of your, your time. Uh, left there to go and do some work with Lionhead and found his own studio, Kinesthetic Games, to make the game of his dreams, Kung Fu Superstar, uh, balance his development with lecturing at the University of Westminster, so welcome, Costas, to this. Um, next along, we have uh, Ben from Radio Games. I've never met Ben before. This could be interesting. Do I know anything about Ben? Yeah, yeah, he was at Rebellion, at Criterion, and Codemasters, and then five years ago, um, co-founded a studio called Rodeo Games. Told me a story about um, the big break that this business got, which is a, a, a lesson for all of us. He's sitting on a plane, talking to the person next to him, and they happen to be playing one of his games on iPad. That person turned out to be the head of licensing at Games Workshop. Warhammer Quest followed, and the business is now up and running and doing very well. So, serendipity of work. Well done there, Ben. Next we have Bruce. Bruce is the CEO and co-founder of Polystream, a leading next-gen, fully streamed interactive entertainment, seamlessly delivering enhanced marketing and playable game demos and full games. That sounds a bit corporate, sorry about that. Uh, previously worked for Sun Microsystems, that's even more corporate in San Francisco. But he was the general manager on live, and rather coolly started his career working on military aircraft. Now that's good. It, oh, hang on. It's almost two years behind Ian, almost Exactly the same start, right. same place, British Aerospace, flight simulators, biggest video games in the world. Wonderful. Have you ever taken Ian yet? Two years behind him still, or are you? Still two years behind. Still two years behind. Okay, next along we have uh, Stuart White. Now, Stuart TV is littered with iconic and award winning games. Started out at Microprose, classic titles, XCOM, F15, went to Bullfrog, worked uh, with EA on Harry Potter and Populous, went to Lionhead, worked on Fable, and uh, his last position there was operations director. Now he tells me he's currently looking for new opportunities. So you follow him on Twitter, he's just playing Fallout 4 all the time. Come on, put some effort in. Okay, and finally, but not least, Sam Shepard. Now a very interesting route into the games industry for Sam. He was a TV producer. He founded the Copenhagen Post, which is a Danish English language newspaper. Had two stints at EA. We might find out what happened in between. And then seven years ago founded Escapist Games, an indie games development studio. Their flagship product, StarChart, is widely considered the top AR application on iOS and Android with 18 million installs worldwide. Sounds been quite vocal about Brexit, so I might drop the bomb in there later and head for cover and see what comes out. <laughs> uh, a nice, gentle, easy question for you all to start with. Question for you all, who's got the mic? Who's, who's going to set us off? Right. So, El oh, Bruce, we'll start with you. Always a good place to start, Bruce. So, um, why has Guildford and the surrounding area become such a strong games hub for development, and why are you here? Um, well, I think Ian captured it that sometimes chance happens, lots of people have gathered, and that group of people, some other large companies have moved here, and over the years, <coughs> EA has moved here, they've started out in Chertsey, we've seen people like Ubisoft move here, and then other companies have moved as well, but then what we've seen from where the larger companies have been, smaller companies have come out of them. And those small companies create new companies. We see um, the companies that have come out of the bullfrog, like Edge Case, and people that then keep growing and keep spawning more and more companies. Uh, recently, as we know, we saw the event with Lionhead, and one of the things that's happened with Lionhead is already a lot of those people have been sucked up or stuck in their own things. And so from one large company, a lot of smaller companies are already being started. And I think that's when you get that right cluster, you get that momentum, you then just keep uh, maintaining that momentum. When we started Polystream, my co-founder, um, ex-Criterion guy, so he was co-founder of Criterion, Adam Billiard with David Lauke. They were acquired by EA. Uh, they're familiar with the area. Uh, I have a history from starting at Dunsfold. And when Adam said, uh, where are we going to put an office? Well, we could have put an office in Guildford. Uh, we could have put an office in London, sorry, but London's huge. So where do you go in London? We've got companies in Hammersmith. We've got companies in the East End. We've got companies in the North, the South. You're still half an hour away from anyone else in London. So you've kind of got the same logistics as being here. But we have this great hub and talent of people. And 
so we very quickly decided we put an office here. Uh, we started hiring, and we've gone in six weeks, we've gone from two people to six people. And that's because the talent's here, it's available, and it keeps that opportunity, and we hope to be another part of building that momentum. Okay, do you agree with that, Stuart? Do you see anything on top of that? Yeah, I, mean, I, I uh, moved down to Guildford in the 90s, and uh, I think at that time it was really clear that it was kind of Bullfrog and uh, Criterion and, and Simmons, actually, that kind of were the, the initial catalyst that so many kind of green shoot companies have come out of, and some have succeeded really well, like you know, up, up until a point, Lionhead, unfortunately, I don't know if they're well now, but you know, Media Molecule and, and the like, and uh, it's, it's very vibrant because Ben, do you want to add anything to that? Or should we move on to the negatives? I mean, do you want to, is there any downsides for being in an established games cluster? You can go positive or negative. What are you up to? I'm, yeah, you're there. You're there. You're there. That's okay. Um, so we, we've done a lot of positives. I, I yeah. have one negative, which okay. is uh, touched on earlier, um, and that's price of living in Guildford. And I, I'd say anyone who's doing a startup, yes, it's really important to have this lovely community that we've got that everyone's been fostering so well. But actually, um, when it comes to living costs, uh, when it comes to rent, when it comes to that day-to-day -day sort of thing, you'd be better off down in the West Country or something, you know, because your money's going to go two or three times as long into your development period. That was one of the biggest challenges we had at Radio Games was uh, trying to scrape together all the funds and that we could do, and that was uh, that was about seven or eight months worth of time that we bought ourselves. If we were somewhere else, that could have gone up to a year, and that would have impacted on the quality of the game. So yes, it is really important. It's lovely to still be able to live here because it's a nice place. But um, but maybe just think about that if you if you are doing a startup. Yeah. Costas, do you want to add anything onto that? Um, uh, not really. I mean, I think everyone covered it. But for me, in the, in the story, I I um, really wanted to work at Minehead, and uh, I got lucky enough to, to do that in 2006. Um, and and like Ian said, I soon realised it's not it's not about the company. Though growing up in my head, it was you know with this, this company that made these games, but actually it was the people, um, and all of those people um, are here, and I love I love this community, and um, it, it was great to see to see being appreciated today. Um, and I was here last year as well, and it's great to see a bigger turnout this year. And I hope I hope it's going to be even bigger next year. Um, and I think so. Yeah, I think that's the that's the positive really. It's just a, an amazing kind of this group of people. Um, I think the, the, the pieces that Ian kind of covered, um, and I think Ben, ben kind of really talked about the, the cost of living here. So, so turning to look at startups a little bit more, maybe Sam, you can uh, chime in on this one if you, if you don't mind. So, uh, four of you have certainly set up startups here in this region, and we've heard a bit about the local support that's available, some of it being praised, and some of it seems to be a little bit under the radar. What's been your experience of getting regional support and local support to help you grow your business from nothing into something? We've had no support that I can think of. The, um, um, the government has given us, uh, you know, a couple of times we've been nearly wooed away by um, other areas of the world, both in the UK and outside, from the point of view of funding. I mean, the, the funding that was offered by other people to us to move there was actually stupid of us not to take. Um, staying here has been okay, but we'd be lucky. And that's, that's not something that every startup can expect to have, and they should absolutely be considering where they start up and what funding is available to them, whether or not it maybe makes it too easy for them or not, um, it's still better than going bust. It's interesting, we've had a variety of initiatives tonight and ideas. Bruce, you've recently founded your company. Um, how, how have you found, have you found any kind of local support? You know, as a, as a lesson for startups in the room in particular, how have you found it? How has that, that support manifested itself? Um, well, we Certainly, you guys, you key, have been our biggest at the same place. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's true. I mean, that's that's probably been one of our best supports. The local network has been a big support. So just being able to take part in some of the events and getting out and meeting people. I would say that from a government perspective, we actually did go through one of the government grant programs, Innovate, and uh, we just closed that out not that long ago. And in fact, I wrote a, a reasonably scathing report to them about their handling of software and technology development projects because of it. Um, and it is something that's under review as a result. It was actually, I would say in the grand scheme of things, probably more of a hindrance than a benefit using that scheme for our um, some of our early funding. And so
so that's also left us kind of a little bit bad taste in our mouth with regards to that kind of thing. We've, we're pretty self-sufficient in what we've been doing since then. And that's kind of what we're focused on is maintaining that and using our networks and our contacts and growing with the, the community and the people rather than sort of trying to rely on support that actually can hold you back if you're not careful. So we, we might try a quick one-word answer then. I know it's not what panels normally do, but um, do you, so whoever's got the microphone, do you feel like there, that the community of games companies in Guildford, I mean, is there a community of games companies in Guildford? Is that what you feel? Yes, at the pub. At the pub. Bruce, down the pub, obviously. Uh, yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. <laughs> around the fringes don't say, seem to be as perfect as perhaps we would like them to be. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, I, I think, you know, even in the, you know, the last few years, it's really accelerated. I think, you know, I was with Kirk a few weeks ago about the involvement of the university and the fact that they're here. I think, um, you know, that you can have got much more involved, which is great. I think there was a Tiger event last week in the cinema. I think Andy Robson stuff, they did with Guildford developers. You know, all of those things, all those networking events and the fact that there's, uh, you know, been some big closures like Bright Lights and Comat and, and, and Lionhead and Mesa. It's all been shaken up and you know, lots of people are now talking and networking a lot more. And I think that that is the strength of this 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 group of people. You know, we all know each other and when we want to have it's a lot easier because people are on our doorstep. But you know, particularly for contractors but also for, for players as well. Okay, so that's a that's a good basis to start with. I mean you're going through the process at the moment, I believe, of, of actually looking to grow a business from nothing and looking for finance. How are you finding, it's not necessarily a local question, but um, how how are you looking for finance and how have you found that? And in a second I'll ask the rest how you've managed to grow your business, what kind of finance routes you've taken. So, kind of lessons learned for the room. So, um, yeah, I mean, finance for me, I was uh, very close up until about two weeks ago to getting a deal and unfortunately it fell through. So, where I'm at the moment is taking a small group of developers, um, majority of these ex Lionhead, and trying to see if we can do something else. And it's just kind of starting this conversations now with, with publishers and agents and the like and you know, you know trying to you know start that process off really and get that pitch together. Okay. Uh, Costas in terms of raising finance, growing your business? So it's 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 mostly been uh, boot, bootstrapping. We've we've raised some investment funding in the past as well. Um, but yeah mostly bootstrapping really is extremely hard in a in a region like Guildford. Um, but you think it's more difficult here? Uh, just because of the yeah just Games or children, it's a tough decision, isn't it? <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us here this evening, to the detriment of your family. Uh, but Ben, how about you? How have you found it getting funding? Um, well, I've, I've actually started up a new company in the last six months. Uh, it's called Pachang. The brief was to. Well, Rating up the app charts in the States. Sorry? Rating up the app charts in the States, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Brilliant. I think if you, if, you know, you all log onto your phones, right? Not right now, please listen. Um, but if you go to the App Store right now, it's number one in, in the puzzle and the arcade charts. Um, we were number one in, over the weekend and stuff. It's, it's been great. Um, that took six months to make. It was myself and my friend Pete, who's back there. And basically, we just wanted to make something that was uh, approachable to everyone. Something for everyone. Something for five-year-olds and for 85-year-olds to play. And it's kind of like a little puzzle game. And it's fun. Um, anyway, that's self self-funded. Uh, the idea being that you know it can raise enough money to something else uh, next, which it's done, which is good. So um, so that, that was kind of nice. I mean, someone gave me some advice back when we, when we started up radio, the first company, and it was, uh, if you can go without getting any kind of funding at all, if you can do it yourself, it's tough, especially in Guildford, um, then you should certainly do that because you get loads more on, on the back end of everything. Um, that was one of the reasons we, we could grow radio so much, that was one of the reasons why the Chang is now growing as well, and uh, I think it's, it's definitely the way to go, is just being able to afford that is, is a tricky thing around here, because I sound like such a doozy there. Um, so yeah, so, so I, I go self-funded every time. Uh, this panel's been a bit more negative than anticipated. We'll try and turn it around in a second. Now, um, Bruce, you found some money recently, didn't you? Where did that come from? Um, we did. 
did. It was through uh, London Venture Partners and Initial Capital. And so we're, we're not a game developer. We're a platform. And so one of the things that some of the investors are looking at is that they're always looking at different things, but they're an interesting pair of investors because they all have a background in games. We've got the Criterion Connection, we've got the EA Connection, we've got the Playfish um, guys from Initial. And they, they both fund games, but they're looking at the technology that goes alongside games as well. And that turned out to be a good thing for us. And so through sort of, we, we spent a lot of time, this, you always talk about that you have to kiss a lot of frogs when you do that. Adam and I probably spent the best part of six months raising those funds to take the company. And we, we had been largely bootstrapping the, the first sort of um, 12, 18 months of the company to get to that point. And so when the money came in, the, the reason for the money was really an accelerator for us. To, to grow a platform is going to take us 10 heads, and we could bootstrap ourselves, we couldn't bootstrap 10 people. So now we're in that place where we got that funding, now we've got to accelerate, grow quickly, and take it to the next place. And that was really, we couldn't have done that without the investment, to be quite frank. Uh, so it's, it's horses for courses, you have to look at can you bootstrap it? If you can, that's a great thing to do, and I can completely appreciate why people do that. But at the same time, for us, we have the backing of the investors. The investors are more than just money. They give us a lot of um, well, sanity checks. They're very smart business people. They're, they have incredible connections all around the world, so they help us get connected with other people. And so that helps us as well. That helps us grow in every part of the business that we're building right now. Excellent. And Sam, do you want to have a look at the, the financing? How's your money come in? How are you? Um, all, all all self done? As well. Um, we were lucky enough to be able to be quick in the A and, and start up and just scrape it through to the point where we made some money. Um, I think my business partner had to sell his car to get hold of uh, his side of it going. Um, we were yeah, extraordinarily lucky. Uh, we, we, sh we shipped a product that was selling six copies a day at uh, three bucks a pop. And, uh, and over six months, we managed to tighten up, add a couple of features that were desirable, and, and it snowballed. We were suddenly up to selling over a thousand a day, and that was quite special. Um, a little bit insane, but uh, quite special. We were lucky, like uh, Ben said, to be able to fund the next thing that we've done, and everything we've done since ourselves, and hopefully we won't have to be going to look for um, huge amounts of investment to be able to continue, because we'll be able to do it again ourselves. It's a fantastic position to be in, but it's not something that anybody can expect. I'm not pointing to a barrel and saying we're going to be like them. Um, even I know that that's completely stupid. Um, and uh, you, you've got to be prepared to either not make it yourself and go and raise money or, or do whatever it takes to, to make your game and your passion come through because that's what ultimately it is. It's more about passion than money. That's an interesting line. Thank you for that. Um, Joe earlier said that there was 150 studios doing VR in the UK. Stuff I made up this morning in a meeting we had with a Japanese investor. Um, so thanks for that. Um, just a quick, uh, just a quick thing to, to throw back um, to everyone here. I mean, VR. You know, we're obviously tracking all of the, the developments in VR and the studios that are working on it. 150 of them is awesome. Quite a few of them around here. Um, is there much faith on the panel in in VR? Maybe one sentence: Is VR going to be good, bad, ugly? What do you think? I hope it's okay to swear, so I'm going to say it's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, VR is amazing, we've done very well with it so far, again, we were lucky. Um, and, and our product isn't a game, it is a, a star chart, so the star chart in VR already has um, a quarter of a million users um, to date, and that's quite, uh, quite cool. Uh, we can see that continuing to grow, and we can see that 2016 is going to be a very interesting year for us in VR. So Stuart Sands, so what about you? I, I, um, I think it's super exciting. I think it's got a lot of long-term potential. I think there's going to be a lot of companies that lose out in the short term. Certainly titles are launched for PlayStation VR, not all of those developers are going to lose out. Bruce, you have VR man? I think it's a transition to AI. That's, and that's where it's going to really change and everything will shift when we get to AI. That's going to be the, the big step forward for everyone. When you don't need a monitor anymore when you're just, it's, I think Google Glass was actually a big setback for AR, just because of the, the image and the way they approached it, but I think AR is where it will be the big step. 
Yeah, a- absolutely. Um, exactly what Bruce said. So the, the VR is a very interesting thing. It's kind of exciting. It makes you feel really sick whenever I try it. Um, I can't really see anyone making any money off it for a long time because that install base just isn't going to be there. So that kind of makes it pointless. Uh, AR in maybe five years' time might be something worth looking at. Um, yeah, but right now you're asking all the wrong questions, man. I want to say you, you, you can um, <laughs> you can ask yourself a question and answer it if you wish. <laughs> what do you, what do you want to say, man? Uh, no, we're here for Costas. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Costas. Um, Light the mood. Don't say I can have kids in VR, so I don't have to pay for my own. Come on. <laughs> Started all you know happy there. We went doom and gloom. We ended on a high. So there's a lovely curve here. Maybe this is the VR curve, or there's the early demand. Can I do? So yeah, can I do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. I also think VR obviously is much more than just games. I mean, the stuff that they're here doing. I mean, there's a lot of potential that kind of brings to these games. Being at concerts or whatever, I think that's probably much more than killer app and being able to replay it. Okay, so uh, I've just got one more question, but if there's any questions from the audience, do get them ready. What we want is a question down the front here, because Nick was brilliant at running around the room earlier. So we want a question at the front, and then one right at the back, and we'll time him and see how far he can get there. Uh, I'm going to drop the, uh, the sort of the Brexit bombshell. Um, <laughs> has anyone been having sleepless nights? Has anyone particularly uh, had strong views on what happened last week and how it might impact? Well, should we start at this end? Yeah, Ben, go on. What do you think? Um, actually, actually it's, it's not too bad. Uh, okay, so if you look at it from a purely business point of view, uh, no, hang on, that sucks. Um, so we're going to be fine, is the message. As in, as businesses, as companies, we're probably going to be fine. It's gonna, there's going to be a transition period. That's going to be bad for a little bit, but we'll be okay. Uh, that's the good news. It, it's awful about the statement that it makes about the company, uh, the, sorry, the country. It uh, makes me a little sad to think that people have to have to actually do something that's radical to try and get the attention of people uh, up in Parliament and things like that. That, mm-hmm. that completely sucks. Um, I'm not going to swear. <laughs> uh, yes, but, but the, the take home is it will be okay. Okay, it's okay, a good starting point. Bruce, what do you think? Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think in the short term, we will be okay. I, I, will, I have to sit down with my team. I will say... In the last, like I just said, in the last six weeks, we've grown our team from two people to six people. Our team, uh, including significant others, represent England, Scotland, France, Slovenia, Norway, Portugal. That's six people, right, right there. But the European Championship is like the European Championships. Um, so they're scared, right? Everyone is really worried about the the impact and what this is going to mean. In the short term, nothing changes. Our financing hasn't changed. Our business plans, our models don't change. But at some point next year, we are going to go for another round of financing. And we don't know what this means for us. But it does open up a very large possibility of do we stay here or do we open up in another country? And that's that's just become a far more real um, strategic thought for us than it was last week. And so it doesn't change anything in the short term. Will we be okay? Well, we plan to be okay, and as startups, our whole job is to adapt, manage, react, change quickly. Um, but the last thing I want to be dealing with when growing teams and trying to rapidly uh, build talent is a points-based system that gives me visas in three months. Interesting. So, Stuart, and then we'll come to you, Costa, and we'll end it on a high. I mean, I think, yeah, I'm very nervous about it. I mean, certainly, I mean, Lionhead and all the companies I've worked with are very, very multicultural, and could work against that be a bad thing, I think, for the United States. I think, um, 
tax breaks is another thing that there was a lot of work to get to where we got to with the, uh, the tax breaks in the UK, and hopefully nothing will change there. Um, and funding, I, mean, I, I met with a, a, a publisher yesterday who, who pretty much said that his understanding was that people were taking much more of a wait and see attitude over the next few months to just see how things work, you know, start freezing and what happening and just to, to check out what happens. And it's that uncertainty, I think, which itself will knock people's confidence to want to invest in the UK, which is a worrying thing for our industry. Costas, do you want to add anything? Uh, uh, so, um, I'm, I'm Greek actually, so I, 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 I just want to two referendums uh, in my, my, what I've considered my two countries uh, in the last few years. Um, and they were all very, they, they were very strange to be quite honest. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's, just, it's just really strange. I think it's a very kind of emotional time, I think, and uh, I, can't, I can't really pretend to understand them sort of, you know, the kind of economical and political um, sort of uh, aspects of, of it fully. Um, but I, yeah, I just, I just think it's, it's, it's any, anything that sort of takes us away from, from, from the union, and um, certainly the games industry is a very multicultural um, union, so um, I, I, I see that as a negative thing. Um, what, what, what happens in the short and lo long term, I guess, is what I have to see. But, um, yeah. So lots of wait and see. What do you think, Sam? <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, I have very strong opinions, I think it's a very bad approach. I think anything that stops somebody like Costas from simply coming over here and working with us is wrong. Full stop. That's, that's bad for us. It's bad for industry. It's bad for the economy. It's bad for anything. Um, as a knock-on effect, yeah, in some ways it's a good move. I mean, my, my, the money in the bank has dropped in value, but at the same time we're going to get a lot more money in from sales that we make outside of England over the next couple of weeks because the land is so low. So on that side, yay. Um, that's a <laughs> on, a, on a selfish business level, yeah, it's going to be fine. On a on an emotional level, on on a, the idea of trying to staff up and not being able to look easily to the rest of Europe to get my staff, I feel uh, disempowered by that. I feel very um, underwhelmed by that thought, and I hope that the government um, listens to the industry leaders that say, we need to be able to hire people, we need to um, do that easily, and I believe that it would be a very sad day if we found ourselves limited only to English talent, not because English talent isn't great, it is great, but there just isn't enough to go around. Uh, one more thing from you, Bruce, then. Sorry. Yeah, I'll just add on the talent piece as well. You're a startup, right? You're a small company. You're in a visa system. You're competing against large companies. When somebody hires someone and has to pay and go through the process of putting someone through a visa, and I know this because I've done it, and I know it's not just about the fact that it is time-consuming, it's expensive. So there is an expectation that you're bringing someone in and they're stable and they're there for multiple years uh, before they start looking for the next thing. Startups don't have that luxury, right? We are living in a world where we are hoping to succeed. We're working hard to do that, and we have to move quickly. But everyone knows that there is a risk that comes with that. And if somebody is going to actually actively go through the visa process to join you, well, stability is probably going to win out versus joining a company that has eight or 12 months of outlook in front of it as well. So for the startups in particular, the uncertainty around this is absolutely massive. Okay, well, thank you very much, Panda, for some very incisive comments and thought-provoking stuff. Um, you have a choice now. Do you want to put your hand up and ask a question, or do you want to hit the beer? That's the real <laughs> question. Uh, any burning questions, we will deal with them. The guys will all be here for a short while, so please feel free to approach them and ask questions. But can you put your hands together and thank Sam Stewart. <laughs>